Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, today I'm pretty excited to be going over that um, John Hopkins inspired uh, organic techno uh, style track here in FL Studio. Um, but if you do use another program, you can still follow along as uh, pretty much all the techniques we'll be using today are applicable in any DAW you use. Uh, now there are quite a few elements to cover. Um, so you can just use the timestamps at the bottom just to skip to whichever uh, parts of the video you want to find useful. So I'm just going to begin this tutorial by going over some of the main sounds in the drum parts. Um, I'm not going to dive too deep into every sound because there's quite a lot going on, uh, but I'll show you the more interesting ones and, and how I created them. So this is kind of like the main beat here. And I'll just show you the, the kicks and snares first. So this is just made up of two sounds, like the, the low end. That's just a really crisp high end one just to cut through the mix. Then the main snare sounds were made up of a few different samples. Uh, these are just uh, recordings of like clocks ticking. That was a bit more of a clap. And I think that one... Some of these are just like folly sounds that come with FL Studio. Um, wherever possible, I try to incorporate like actual folly recordings and um, just sounds of natural elements as opposed to using... Uh, just sticking to like drum sounds. It's another clock there. Okay. Now this is probably the most interesting sound here. And I'll just go into the actual recording of that. So I've got my drums here and it started off with this uh, sample here. So it's just a loop of um, a drum and brush strokes hitting in like a snare. And then I gr drag that into a granulizer. And once I was in there, I just drew in uh, one note. And then from there, you can kind of mess around with all these settings just to get something uh, a bit more interesting. And the pan is also really cool. And you can get some really nice granular, like interesting textures going on. And uh, once I had that, I just recorded it, uh, recorded the audio clip and dragged it into uh, the playlist here. And tried to keep it kind of in beat with, the, with what I had going on with the kick and snare. So if I just layered them over here. Sort of in time, but quite a few of the notes are out. Um, and as you can see, I just went uh, dove further into it and just kind of chopped it up and um, made sure some of them were a bit more on beat, took away some of the some of the other sounds, and then just played around with it until it kind of sounded okay. And in there, you get like a few reverses. Um, quite a lot of it is very, um, there's like a lot of swing going on. It's got like quite a nice loose uh, kind of groove and thought that gave it like quite a nice sound. Now onto this one here. This was just some heavily distorted white noise. Sounds a bit brutal. So I just took the volume envelope down to here. And that way I could just um, play in these kind of interesting rhythms. So I'll just start off by taking these effects. VQ. And then these two gross beats here. This was just adding more of a stutter to make the sounds, um, yeah, just kind of tighten up the sound a bit. 
and this one was acting just as a, a side chain, kind of like a pump. Then a wee bit of reverb and a filter. And then as the track progresses, I just automated this uh, decay here to make it sound really tight. And then opened out throughout the track. And then these sounds here. This is just a, another like folly recording from um, VHS Static. So just like real cool glitchy kind of stuff. And then matched uh, that up with this rhythm here. And I think this is another one. And then together they all sound like this. So most of this was just uh, experimenting around, chopping stuff up and, and adding different layers here and there to, to create like a real kind of swingy kind of groove. And then these are all sort of more basic sounds. So this is like a hi-hat. Most of these came with FL Studio. And then we reverse. Got a couple of shakers here. And with these and a lot of the other sounds I used, um, I just messed around with the, the mole, which is like the timing. So this would be the original sample. And then as you can see, I pitched it down like an octave as well. Gives it that kind of like flammy kind of sound. And this is just a hat loop that I took from another project that I was working on. Just had a bit more crisp high end kind of groove. So we'll just play them with the kick. They're kind of like the main hi-hat sounds going on. And then over here I had these uh, folly recordings of keys jangling. So I'll just take the effects off to begin with. Oops, sorry, it's a bit quiet. And then just mess around, uh, add in some distortion. Again, a bit gross beat, uh, just to make the sound a bit uh, more static. And then a flanger at the end, and that was just add a bit more movement in the sound. So they are kind of like glitchy. Um, but you could take the, maybe if you had it with like less distortion, it would make him sound a bit more like a nice little high end sort of loopy thing going on. Um, but I find it sat too far down in the mix. So I just added the distortion to, to kind of crispen it up a bit. So for the keys, and then I also had... This is kind of like a straightforward hi-hat kind of groove going on. And these are just follow recordings. One was rain forced or something like that. Um, it's probably easier if I just take the effects off first and play it for you. That's how it started. And then again, just straight away with the distortion. Then a filter freak. Take out those low ends. So I'll just show you what the filter freak is doing. Um, if you go into uh, Love Filter and just set up a, an LFO, just like this, and then you can just adjust the speed and then mess around with these. I think it would normally look like that or something. 
So we're make, gonna make it more of a sawtooth. And then that would be like quarter notes. And then you can just mess around with like the decay. And it creates like a your own sort of quick hi-hat kind of groove. Now the only reason I actually use the, the filter freak is because it's got this um this ability to put swing into it. And because the rest of the track was in swing as well, um it just sounded offbeat when I didn't have that going on. And I had a bit of OTT as well, just pumping up the, the high end a bit. That's it for those. Now we've got the ride over here. As you can hear, that's just there for like really high end kind of hiss. And again, without the effects. And then just some distortion, EQ to take out the low end. A bit of delay with a ping pong just to bounce around the stereo a bit. A bit of reverb. Um, when it came to the reverb, most of uh, the drum sounds I had, so I wanted to sound pretty tight and close. Um, so usually we'd go for a bedroom or a family room, as there are quite small rooms, or the, the locker sounds quite good as well. And then that, again, that was just a, like a side chain. This is just panning the sound left and right. And then uh, used a filter to bring the sound in and out of the song. And finally, for the drums, had this uh, open hi hat, and then that comes in at the the most climactic part of the track. And that was just this sound here, and that one there. And that's pretty much it. In fact, I do have a few more sounds here. Again, these were just folly recordings of these sort of glitchy sounds. Actually, no, that was something else. That was this sound here. So it's just like a factory machine work or something like that. And recorded this glitchy bit in. So if you set one of these up to record, and then just zoom in here, any little bit will do. Just set a really tight loop mark. And that was that. So we'll stop that, just drag that into the, the playlist there and then just chop it around, uh, similar to the to way I did these ones as well. But I didn't really use them too much in the track, but just wanted to give you an example of um, some other stuff you could try. So as you can see, there is quite a lot of automation going on, um, even just within the drums. Um, so a few of the elements are the same all the way through, but many of them will progress, um, as you can see here with the, the scratchy sort of sounds. They'll open up and close throughout the tracks, depending on where it is. Uh, and that's just to create a, a constant sense like everything's evolving and, and progressing over the track, um, as opposed to everything just coming in static, straight away, everything kind of blended in with each other. Um, and it just creates a smoother transition between each part of the song and also gives us almost like this sort of hypnotic effect, uh, which I did with a lot of the other um, sounds as well, but I'll go over them as we as we get into it. And just to demonstrate um, some of the things I did, uh, so this is the rise and automated the filter and the way it pans. And then here when the kick comes in, it's side chained. 
and then also had all the drums running into their own group here. Aside from, I think, the kick, that was the only one that was left out. So that as the, the song grows more intense, actually all the sounds in the drums become um, more side-chained. So around here in the track. And that's just add like a more of like a bounce in the most in the more intense part of the song, which is I think what um, John Hopkins says in Open Eye Signal. At least that's sort of the way it sounds, um, sort of towards the end of the track when everything's getting like really big and and bouncy. Um, and I that is it for the drums. So now we'll just go over the bass part. Made up of two sounds. So the first is the more subby of the two. And to make that, I just use the 3x oscillator, just playing a, a sawtooth. This was the volume and filter envelopes. Just give it more of that plucky sound. The filter taken down to around here. And it was really straightforward, just playing 16th, uh, like a walking bass kind of sound. And on that, I had uh, a gross beat just there for the side chain. The VQ taking out some of those lower um, body frequencies and a filter. And then layered on top of that, I had this one here. So this one I tried to model off uh, the bass sound that you hear in Everything Connected. Um, so it's a lot wider and uh, much punchier and, and got that kind of like strong attack to it. And that was playing pretty much verbatim the, the notes that the, the lead is following as well. And to make that, I was using uh, Harmless. And it's quite a simple patch. So I uh, just selected the mole from the, the waveform. Frequency taken down to around here. Short decay and a bit of release. And then just use the unison, just give it a bit of uh, stereo width. And then over here in the compression section, I uh, just selected distortion, added a bit of that with a small studio uh, reverb, and then automated the, the pluck throughout the track. So I'll just start off by showing you how I made the two drone sounds. Um, again, they were just folly recordings, one from the rainforest and one for fireplace. And they sound like this without the effects. And to get the drone, um, I just added a, an EQ. And because the, the song is in B, B minor, I just went to this frequency of charts. Um, I'll leave a link for this. Sorry, frequency of notes and found all the Bs. So that's 493. And I think I went up in another octave or two octaves. And that's 1975. So if you find those in the EQ and then just set it to one of these uh, parametrics and then just put a big boost in it. all it is. Pretty easy to make. And then just a reverb, sidechain and EQ. Nice and simple. Now this feedback drone over here. I 
I just made by sampling the, the vocal pads and adding a use an echo boy. Oops. Let's turn all this off. Um, you could do this with any analog bass delay. All you need is the to turn the feedback all the way to the max um, and add some feedback, uh, sorry, some saturation and bring that in and then display either the root note or here I've just got like a, a little harmony and display the first few seconds of that. And then there you have it. Nice easy one. Now all these um, blur pads in the intro, they kind of originated as loops and recordings. So one of them was just a, a guitar loop that I used from uh, another project. And these string patches, um, I just copied the same notes as I did uh, from some of the other patterns and put it into the, the strings VST, just the free one that comes with FL Studio. And once I had that, uh, I just recorded it out and applied a blur to the whole thing. So just to demonstrate, say for example, that was the, the loop I wanted to use. This is the vocals. Just drag that into Edison. And then hit Command B or Control B. Then just set your blur amount, and you can also preview it. And then just drag that back into the playlist. So I'll just show you how they sound together. Um, usually I would just drag two in. One would be pitched up, and the other one would be pitched down an octave or just as it was uh, recorded. So it's quite ambient and you can end up with some pretty interesting uh, sound and stuff and it's a good way to just utilize some of the sounds you've already made in your projects um, and as a, just give them more textures and kind of fills out the, the space a bit. Now moving over here to the vocals, I think this uh, was just a harmony just as it came. I did a bit of EQ and uh, reverb. This one was an octave lower. Now as you can see the, the loop actually extends over three and a half bars um so when i put the vocal in whoops and it came to here it just meant i had to cut it and kind of offset the the high one from the low one so some of the notes don't quite match up with each other but i thought it sounded okay still That was them. Now these are the two that I made myself, or at least one of them. Oh, where are we going? Here we are. So this was just a vocal pad, just a, a short recording of a vocal, as you might have guessed. 
Um, I did do a whole tutorial on this, so I'll leave the link for that in the uh, description because I don't want to go into it too much here. But um, yeah, that was just a sample of a vocal which I pitched and then just used for playing the notes and it added a bunch of effects here. So EQ, a bit of flanger, some delay, filter and a few different reverbs. So without the effects. Sorry, that was with the choir as well. This is how it sounds by itself. Quite dreamy and uh, ethereal and sits really like high up in the mix. So, so cuts through like the leads and just gives it like a nice atmosphere. Um, and this one was just a choir preset from uh, Spitfire Labs. This is free to download um, and sounds really nice as well. And layer it up all together, it sounds like this. And there we have it. So they're all kind of modeled off um, the kind of airy vocal. Um, oops. vocal stuff that's going on in open eye signal at least that's I'm trying to get kind of close to that sound so over here we have the piano and before I get into it I also mention as I kind of just brushed over earlier um, when it came to writing the actual chord progression I tried to stay away from uh, just having the straightforward uh, 16 bar loops um, which are common in a lot of dance music but uh, especially with uh, John Hopkins style of uh, techno tracks they're they're very unpredictable and a lot of it comes from the the chord progression and changes um don't s stick to like the four four 16 bar loops so as you can see here there's extended for um two bars and then the third one goes over here for one more and then it sort of changes up and then loops back um in a way which isn't necessarily predictable predictable but um and it adds a bit more tension and uh it's just a more creative and interesting way of of writing um chord progressions anyway this is the piano here that's made up of a few sounds so the first i just used um this is noir by uh, Contact, like the Neil Strand ones, and then also layered that up with the, the one from Labs. This one sounds a bit more felty. Um, and it's not necessary, but sometimes it sounds nice not just to layer up, you know, like drum sounds and stuff, but actually your instruments, as you would like maybe your pads and stuff as well, uh, just for different qualities or to add more stereo width to the sound. Um, but anyway, once I export this project, I'll replace all these third-party uh, third uh, VSTs with the, just the ones that come with FL Studio uh, so that there's nothing missing when you come to open your projects. And then if you have your own, you can add them in or whatever. But um, yeah, the, these are just the ones I used for this uh, example. Um, now this last sound here is just a bit of uh, white noise. And this is to kind of emulate the, the felt sound of a piano. Um, so if you had the, the one just with FL Studio and you added that to it, it kind of gives it a, a more natural feel. There we are. Piano done. So to make this lead sound, I was just using the 3X oscillator. And here we've got a sawtooth. 
Um, and then I've also got a square wave and that sect the, the same octave. Um, it's muted for most of the track, uh, but sometimes I'd bring it in. And kind of like switch between the two, uh, just automating the volume of this one here. And there was also a tiny bit of white noise. And to get that plucky sound, uh, set the volume envelope like this. So I'll just take that one off. And then it was similar for the, the Mod X. This is the, the filter envelope. And that was pretty much it. Um, I found the, the SVF uh, low pass sounded the best, um, but you can mess around with uh, whichever, whichever ones you want. And uh, basically just throughout the whole track, uh, you can see there's a lot of automation going on. Um, so some was the, the decay of the sound, some was the filter, some was the, the resonance as you can see here. And then, as I said before, um, automating some of the, the amount of the square wave as well. Now, moving on to the effects. So this was a, a bittersweet. This basically makes the sound, um, makes the transients of the sound a bit louder. So it makes it sound more plucky. And let's go in the other way. Then just use the synchronizer, just adds a bit more, just to bring up the volume a bit. Tiny bit of distortion. And then um, the growth speed here, uh, mostly I was, I was using it for the sidechain, but also set it to uh, Chaos 2. And then we'd also automate that on the odd bar, and that basically like reverses the sound. Nice cool little alteration there. Then a bit of reverb. Uh, limiter just to, to compress the sound a bit. And then another EQ. And there we have it. Uh, this also had its own auxiliary send. Uh, so to do that, you just click um, down here when you've got this channel selected. And just hit that and that sends it to another channel not to take it off um, and, but you have to be careful not to double up the the signal so to do that uh, just make sure the dry is turned all the way down um, and on this channel I had to delay and then some reverb uh, distortion uh, growth speed again and the EQ and this is dry, just to try and make like a, a drone sound out of the actual lead so I'll just bring it in slowly here And that was also automated throughout the track to, to make certain parts um, just have uh, more of an impact. Uh, that's pretty much of the lead. Um, as you can he see here, this is where the drone kind of builds up. And I'll just play that through the bit bass. Now, I forgot to mention it um, when I was going over the pads, uh, so I'll just show you this um, this little guitar pad thing that I got, got going on over here. Um, so this is a classic example of not having anything in, right, in mind, really, when making it. I was just messing around with uh, different samples and LFOs and stuff. So I think this is just a recording of a guitar, but you could use anything. Um, 
And then this is the, the volume envelope. And over here, where was it? Sorry, just trying to remember how I actually made it. This is uh, an LFO automating the, the filter um, to set to a sine wave. And as the, the note length increased, just automated this amount. So it's quite a basic sound, but once added uh, all these effects to it, so EQ, distortion, So just go through and play them all. And once I layered that over the the lead sound, I felt like they matched up pretty well. So we'll just bring that back in over here. So last little bit here, I'm just going to go over some of the other Foley recordings and stuff that I used uh, in the transitions and drops of the songs. Song? Songs? Um, first, this little uh, vocal chop here. Maybe it could be a lucky charm. Oof. Awful. Um, and to that, I just added uh, loads of delay with a hefty amount of feedback and some distortion. And over here, I've just got these uh, white noise downlifters. I think I was too lazy to even make them, just uh, got them off splice. And over here we've got the sound of waves crashing, which I automated the volume, uh, took out the low end and then brought it back in for the drop. And the bit after that was a uh, sound of thunder. Now over here, just got a vocal sample of somebody screaming or something like that. Sounds pretty brutal, um, but just use that as a riser by playing in one note, pretty low down, just like a B. And then if you select the slides and then just draw in a, another note as long. Um, and then I just added some delay and reverb again to that. Nice little riser. And then the last one here, this is just a sine wave. And automated the, um, so I changed the volume and filter envelope to look like this and the pitch, and then just automated this bit here. So at 50% it does nothing, or 0%, then you can go up or negative.
And that's just how I uh, automated it there. So I'll just play all those together. Just to give you a good example of how they sound in the drop. And I'll just chuck in a kick. Bass. that pretty much covers it, everything in the track, I believe. So that's it for today's video guys. As always I'll leave uh, links in the description for the uh, full track, all the free VSTs that I used, uh, the project file, all that stuff. Um, we did go over quite a bit today so well done for sticking to the end. Uh, if there is anything that I did miss or you have any questions, uh, please let me know, and I guess I'll see you in the next one. All right, see you later, guys. Peace.